I don't know about you guys, but court cam videos are some of my favorite videos to check out. So I've found a few that we are going to dive into. And today we got the top five greatest escapes. I've got to see this. Apparently they're uh, Michael Schofield. Let's, let's see what happens over here. Let's kick things off in the Benton County Justice Center in Washington State, where a judge has found Gerald Hyde II guilty of methamphetamine possession. With the arraignment now over, he's being taken back to jail. Or is he? The defendant has slipped away from security and re-entered the courtroom. Watch this he man. He strips off his prison issue shirt. Watch him only be in for like a, a month or two. And uses it to hide his handcuffs. He makes it to the hallway, and after a quick look around, he takes off. Along the way, he ditches the distinctive orange prison issue shoes and continues barefoot through the courthouse. Quickly makes his way to the lobby until he exits straight through the front doors and out onto the street. All before anyone seemingly even noticed he was missing. But within two hours, police catch up with him hiding at a friend's house. That's usually how it goes. And now you probably went from like, I mean, listen, he may have had a lot of time. Maybe that's why he did it. But I, I he probably went from like six months to like over a year now or a couple. I don't know how much trouble you get in, but we're about to find out, I bet. Oh, I wish we did. I don't He's think immediately it, taken back into custody. I think it's just going to switch to the next one. Oh, I want to hear how much more time they get. Next, we head to Jefferson County Circuit Court in Louisville, Kentucky. We are on the record. Commonwealth versus Rayton Woodford. Allegation. This is 29-year-old Rayton Woodford. He's in the courtroom today for a probation revocation hearing. He'd previously been sentenced to probation for drugs and weapons charges, but violated the terms. Sitting a few feet away is Woodford's girlfriend. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be true? During Woodford's hearing, the detective provides testimony. Uh, that evening, he was charged with the handgun and uh, narcotics. Um, and if you know, was Mr. Woodford at the time a convicted felon? Uh, yes, he was. Once the testimony concludes, the camera, controlled by Judge Barry Willett, remains locked on the empty witness chair as the judge announces his decision. Probation revoked in its entirety. Mr. Woodford, I'm going to send you to serve five years. Good luck to you. <laughs> no, ma'am. That flash across the screen was Woodford making a run for it. Woodford's girlfriend can be heard pleading with her boyfriend to stop. Yeah, because she's like, five years is enough. Now you're going to get more time. Especially if, let's say, you hurt somebody in the process of trying to get out. You try to fight somebody off. Like, it, they're going to add charges and charges. Don't let me, please. The record will reflect that Mr. Woodford made an unsuccessful effort to escape. Woodford is stopped by deputies. He's brought back into the courtroom now and taken into custody. We're at the Lewis County Courthouse in Chehalis, Washington, in the courtroom of Judge R.W. Buzzard, who's just finished some business with the four defendants to the right. This is Tanner Jacobson, who's charged with reckless driving and driving with a suspended license. This is Cody Howard, who's charged with second degree burglary, first degree trafficking in stolen property, third degree driving with a suspended license, and two warrants for failing to appear in court. Neither of them feel like sticking around. I feel like the first guy's charges were not that bad. Now, I don't know off the top of my head, and it probably depends on which state, but I feel like he wasn't going to get all that much time. I, 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 some of this just seems like a really stupid idea. I get that you don't want to go to jail. I wouldn't either. That's why I try to do nothing illegal. But if I'm going to go, like, and it's not like life or something crazy or like the majority of my life, then I feel like you just... You got to just go through with it. There's a chance that on good behavior, you may be able to get out early as well. So Judge Buzzard springs into action. And it's yeah. on. He chases him. 
Keep in mind the two escapees are in handcuffs and prison issue sandals. Oof. Oof. A witness points the judge in the right direction, as does this bright orange clue here. They've made it to the third floor stairwell. He's really keeping that one slipper on. Let's kick it off. Or and now to the whatever. second, just one floor away from freedom. But Judge Buzzard is gaining some ground, especially on the one who lost his sandal. The judge tackles the lagging defendant just outside the exit to the building. Shout out to the judge for being about that Two life. Two deputies catch up moments later. The deputies bring him back to us. Yo, how come the deputies is just going mad calm? They're just walking through the door like, all right, well, let's see if they're out here. Let's go check. The judge just straight up got up and chased him. He said, I don't care. I'm going for him. Shout out to that judge. Usually you don't see that from a judge. A lot of times judges are a lot older, but it's like, that's just very interesting to me that the judge himself took it into his own hands and was like, I'm going to go catch these fools. I ain't letting them get away. Cell. The other defendants picked up just a few blocks away. Both have second degree escape added to their charges. That's so what stupid. were these two thinking? Glad you asked. We were sitting there on the benches together, and he's like, I'm going to run. I said, what am I doing? What did I just do? I got to go with it now. There's nothing. I can't stop right here. There's nothing I can do now. I'm, I'm screwed. I only get like four blocks, and then I stop. Like, I just stopped on my own. I'm like, what am I doing right now? It was just a split second, like decision i don't even know why i did it like i would be out of here if i wouldn't have ran see that's what i'm saying at least he acknowledges it but it's just wild to me because it's like let's just say that you got away and somehow you got the cuffs off then what so for the rest of your life or for however long they're because i mean i guess if it's petty stuff maybe eventually they're not gonna they're not gonna like actively be looking for you but as soon as you try to get a job you use your name somewhere you open a bank account like anything like that like they're going to have something out that probably flags it and you're going to eventually get caught. Eventually you're going to get caught and you're going to do more time. And it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Our next stop is at the Fayette County Justice Center in Fayetteville, Georgia, where 24 year old Ronard Neal, seen here, appears before Judge Fletcher Sams. Neal's in court today to face previous charges of theft and fleeing officers. But there's one big problem. He was supposed to be there yesterday, but didn't show up. So after a bench warrant was issued for his arrest, Judge Sams orders deputies to take him into custody for failure to appear. But Neil has other ideas. He tumbles into an adjoining courtroom packed with shocked onlookers as he runs through and damages a door. Neil escapes down a stairwell toward the first floor exit. He can almost taste his freedom. But with deputies and police officers in hot pursuit, Neil's returned to court later that day, where he pleads guilty to his previous charges. And for his escape attempt, which included damaging property and injuring officers, Neil's hit with additional charges and five more years in prison. Five more years. See, because an officer got injured, battery. You broke a door, interference with government property. They're going to hit you with the, the highest of whatever it is they can get for the shit that you do as you try to run out of there. And then the escape. Five more years for something that it's very unlikely to have ever worked anyway. It's just, oh my goodness. I wish I, I can't say it enough that it makes no sense to me, but I guess it is what it is, right? This is what people do. He's currently serving a 10, Ten year years. sentence. Doubled in his Georgia's sentence. Georgia's least state prison. Doubled his sentence for, for nothing. Go to the Juvenile Justice Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It's after 9 p.m. Four teens aged 15 to 17 have been left unsupervised while on a work detail off camera in the basement of the building. As minors, these boys are staying here instead of jail while they await trial for crimes, including armed robbery, auto theft, and murder. And as you can see, they don't plan on sticking around for their trials. They've just come up a basement elevator and are wearing what appear to be yellow security vests. While one of the young men begins making his way down the hall, he changes his mind and follows the others up the stairs. 
When they get to the ground floor, the teens bolt through the front entrance. No one's stopping them. Cameras catch the entire escape. For now, they've made it and run off into the night. Eventually, all four involved in the escape were caught and could now face additional charges. It's later discovered that the four teens likely had help from the inside. Oh. Two employees are terminated and arrested for assisting the juveniles in their escape. That's even stupider. You had a, you had a good job. You, what are we doing? Oh, people make decisions, man. Some of these decisions are wild. They're wild. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about this. If there's some more like this, like Greatest Escapes, anything with the court cam stuff, please let me know down below because I always like to find new stuff to, uh, to check out. But whew, I will catch you next video, homie.